How you doing guys? I'm Matt Walden. Today we're here with Mishimoto in a Hyundai Genesis four-cylinder turbo. Mishimoto has just released the direct fit oil cooler kit for the Hyundai Genesis, which drops temps at almost 15 degrees just from cruising. Wait till you get it into boost. Let me show you what this thing's all about. As you can see, Mishimoto has provided their 19 row oil cooler, which is excellent at cooling the oil and dropping temperatures in the engine bay. Also, you can see the rest of the hardware with the kit. We have the oil filter, sandwich plate, adapter fittings for the oil lines, all the bracketry that goes right on the front end of this Genesis, as well as all the hardware, adapters, and fittings that you need to get this oil cool, cooled down in your Genesis. To install the Mishimoto Hyundai Genesis Direct Fit Oil Cooler Kit, you will need panel tool, Phillips head screwdriver, five millimeter Allen key set, 10 millimeter socket, extension and ratchet, 10 millimeter wrench, one inch wrench, and a 27 millimeter socket along with a ratchet for that. Installation time is about an hour. Difficulty is about a three out of five. Well, the absolute hardest part about the oil cooler install on the Genesis is jacking up the car. If you offer your friends a couple beers, I'm pretty sure you can get that done for you. After you got the car jacked up, what you want to do is remove the pop clips along the top row of the front bumper, which as you can see here, have already been removed. Next, we're going to go underneath, remove the splash shields off the bottom of the car. We're going to remove the two outer splash shields by removing the two Phillips head screws on each side of the front bumper. Once those are off, we can undo the side panels and the front bumper should pull right off. Next, remove the two outer bolts that hold the front bumper to the fender. This is right in the wheel well area of the car. Now, after you got the two screws out of the side panels, pull out on that front bumper on pops. Next, you wanna locate the horn relocation bracket. And again, this is supplied by Nishimoto, your leader in performance and aftermarket cooling. All right, shameless plug right there, guys. All right, horn relocation bracket. So what we're gonna do is disconnect the horns from the vehicle. All right, we've got one bracket disconnected. We're gonna disconnect this bracket completely from the back of the horn here. Now, you want to locate the bracket, and this one has an indexed corner on it. This bracket will sit in the car directly like this, so we're going to move the horn on the left side to the middle hole. And remove the right side horn. Again, remove the bracket from the back of the horn. Here's where it gets tricky. If you've done everything correctly, the indexing mark will line up with the tab on the rad support, and you're gonna bolt it up right here. All right, next thing is we're gonna assemble the oil cooler to the oil cooler bracket. And if you take a look here, this has a, a fold towards the front of the car on the vertical brackets. On the horizontal bracket, the fold is in the front of the car. So I'm gonna bolt that guy up there like that. Make sure that the nuts are on the fitting side of the oil cooler setup. And use the supplied 
bolt and nut combinations here. 10 millimeter wrench and socket is definitely handy here. Once everything's snugged up, grab the Mishimoto supplied hardware that comes with the kit and let's attach it to the front end of the car. Don't forget the other bracket, the auxiliary bracket as well as the other nuts and bolts. Now when you're fitting the oil cooler in, drop it down from the top below the front bumper crash bar here and get her lined up with the mounting brackets. Now remember this car was automatic. The automatic trans cooler sits directly in front of that. So we're gonna need to go ahead and mate these bolts together with both coolers installed at the same time. Now, again, if your Genesis is of the manual transmission type, Mishimoto has supplied the two black bolts that thread directly into the front end of the car for you. Since this is on automatic, we're gonna be using the factory hardware on this and get everything lined back up hold it back up into place here. So no need to use those bolts on this one. Before we tighten them all the way, we're gonna get that third bracket on here, which I'm gonna show you right now. The third hood latch bolt is gonna go through the single ended one. What you wanna do is make sure that the oil cooler is lined up with the two extra bolt holes for the core, and then go ahead and tighten this guy down, because you're not gonna be able to get to this with the other ones in there. And then bolt the core to the bracket. The nuts go on top and the bolts come in from the bottom. All right, before we put the lines on, we're gonna have to remove the factory diversion plate in here. That is removed by just simply pulling up on it and turning it sideways. This time we can go ahead and put these lines on and get everything tightened up on the front end here. There's one short line and one long line. The short line is gonna go on this side of things. And the long line is gonna go towards the middle of the car. Now pay special attention here to the routing of the longer line too, especially you guys with the front mount intercooler kits. You're gonna have to go behind the Mishimoto bracket and come in on the other side of that. All right, now get out your one inch wrench. That's what's recommended for this. Go ahead and tighten up the, again, shorter line towards the outside of the car, longer line towards the inside, towards the center line of the car. All right, before we route the lines, we're gonna install the banjo fittings to make things a little bit easier underneath of the car. In order to do this, we're gonna take the washers off and take the nut out of it just the bat banjo part itself. Like I said, we're just gonna put this on loosely. That way we can adjust everything so it fits nicely when it's underneath of there. So just like that, same thing on the other line. The next step is to take the oil filter off of the engine and get a drain pan ready because there's gonna be a little bit extra coming out here. All right, after you have the lines routed, we're gonna show you this outside of the car so that you guys can see what's going on because honestly, if I do it in the car, you're not gonna be able to see anything. So, the O-ring side of the oil filter block goes towards the engine. The non-O-ring side of the oil filter block is always gonna go towards your oil filter. 
This is the oil filter adapter nut that comes with the kit. That's gonna screw onto the engine and clamp this adapter plate to the engine, allowing you to put the oil filter right on this adapter plate here. Now, the adapter plate comes with a couple of plugs, which I've already taken the liberty of putting Teflon tape on the plugs and installing the plugs in the side of here. If you have gauges or an oil pressure gauge or oil temperature gauge, you can put your sensors right in the side of this. So, preparing for the installation here, what we're gonna do is attach the banjo fittings to the lines. Now, with the banjo fittings, you have the whole bolt assembly, a grounded washer here with a rubber insert. And you're also gonna wanna have one of those grommeted washers on the other side of this banjo to seal everything up nicely. Now once everything's assembled loosely by hand, we're gonna go ahead and install this oil filter block and then we're gonna go and tighten everything up afterwards. So let's go onto the car and check it out. There you see the oil filter housing. And the Mishimoto block is gonna bolt directly to that. Again, make sure the O-ring is going towards the engine and install the adapter nut in the middle of this oil filter block. Use the 27 millimeter socket to attach the oil filter block to the OE housing. Now keep in mind, every time you do an oil change, you wanna make sure that this nut on this sandwich plate is tight. You need to check the tightness of it every time the oil filter comes off. The lines and the banjo fitting should also be checked periodically for leaks and for tightness. After everything's tightened up, go ahead and replace the oil filter. All right, as soon as all your lines are on, your oil filter's on, make sure everything is tight. And go ahead and start up the car. As the car is warming up, make sure you double and triple check it for leaks. This is critical, otherwise severe engine damage may result from your leaky oil cooler kit. All right, after you've checked it for your leaks, make sure that everything is good and tight. We can place the front bumper cover back on. Everything just clips back into place. Replace the clips on the side and underneath. Lower the car and you're good to go. This is Matt Walden signing off solo for Mishimoto and the Hyundai Genesis direct fit oil cooler kit. We'll see you guys next time. Hey man, so what about that beer? I guess I do owe you a beer, huh? Hey bud. Let's do Stop it. Me. Let's do it up.